hello and welcome back to the channel or welcome if you're new we're in the garden today and as usual why is why is it we get the sunniest summery days in autumn it's absolutely beautiful today and i didn't want to waste it by doing any indoor jobs so i decided to get outside and do some satisfying garden cleanups before all of the leaves start falling on everything Around about mid-October, I decided to catch up on the garden before it gets a bit out of control coming into late autumn, coming into winter. So in the square patch of grass that I have in the front, some of you might remember back in, well, I think it was April I started it, but it was around about June, July, it actually came into flower. So I did a no dig mini meadow. So I have a wild patch in the front, but along with the wild patch, I also don't cut the grass in the front as often, probably cut it every two to three weeks. But as a result, it can look a little bit messy and a little bit unkempt. And because it's in the front of my garden, that's what everybody sees. It's like, I don't know, the window to your shop, as they say. So I don't want people walking past going, oh my God, this one has neglected their garden. So something that I have not done in forever is edge the lawn. You're gonna see how much turf has overgrown on the grass that's here. And just up there with power washing, I find this so satisfying. Did a bit of power washing in one of the videos last month and I'm so glad you guys were loving it as well because it's like oddly satisfying. I sometimes watch these ASMR garden videos where there's nobody talking, it's just sound and it's all sped up and it's like the simple garden jobs and it's just so satisfying. They could be like trimming back a hedge, doing the edging on the grass, on the lawn and the pathways, cutting back something overgrown, power washing. And I just find it so satisfying to watch. So here is my attempt at a little bit of sat satisfying edging. But one of the reasons why I wanted to do this is because A, probably haven't done it in about two years, but it completely tidies up the front so even if I do like I neglect cutting the grass and I have my little wild patch even if that looks a bit wild if that edge is crisp I think people would be like yeah you know what I see what she's doing here <laughs> she's got a crispy corner she's fine it's tidy she hasn't forgotten about it and actually as I was doing this I have a video from I think it's about two or three garden videos back where I visited the walled garden in uh, the phoenix park in ashtown and if you look at that footage of the walled garden you will see that they just have crisp grass edges so they have these like not raised beds but they have these flower beds and they're just dug out it doesn't look like there's any kind of metal edging or stone edging it's just crisp like just cut into the turf so i don't know you can go back and find that video it's only a couple of videos back and you can kind of see what I mean. But yeah, I'm going for that same effect and I hope you think it's tidy too. Also, you'll see that I'm using a nifty little edging tool, which I cannot remember purchasing, but I must have on one of my little garden center trips. But you can totally use a spade. One of those square spades, shovels, would be absolutely perfect for doing the edging. That fancy tool, I think it is handy, but yeah, you can, I've seen people use a spade, so you don't have to buy the thingy that I'm using.
So here's a look at the mini meadow. Some of the early flowering annuals have gone to seed and I've just left them. So the likes of the poppy, there was a couple of oxide daisies as well. I've kind of just let them go to seed. A lot of the existing clover that was already in the grass, that's grown like quite tall and there's loads of foliage. So if you remember, if this was like, I put down a piece of cardboard, covered it with some soil that I had and then I covered it with seed. So even around about July time, it was still looking a little patchy. Whereas now, all of that cardboard is covered with green foliage. There's actually some wild carrot in there as well. And I took some seed from, there's a meadow in a park where I go walking. And last autumn, I took some of the seeds from the wild carrot and I sprinkled them into this area, so. I wanted to share some of the plants that are still going strong in the front border. I kind of have to film them a bit up close because I'm trying to not film my neighbor's houses just for privacy. Because I planted them a little bit later, it was like mid, late May, it could have been the beginning of June. Some of the flowers that I trimmed back, they're actually having a second flush quite late in the season. There is an oriental poppy that was in flower when I planted it. And I cut it back because I wanted it to kind of just focus on growing roots. And it has a beautiful seed head on it. Sorry, not a seed head, a bud about to open. So it'll be interesting to see if it's going to open in October. Um, I did want it to kind of just go to seed so I could collect it. There's loads of erysimum, erysimum wallflower. They flower, all, they flower all throughout this year. They're like, if you're looking for something with a long flowering period, get some wallflowers. So I wasn't expecting to have this much color this late into the season in the front, but honestly, I think it's because I planted them a bit later and I trimmed back on some things. So the like of the ver verbascum as well, I cut that back and I got another second flush on it. So I'm really pleased with how it's looking. Okay, my next job, but I do think I'm gonna have to get a professional to help me with this one, but I have been climbing the tree in the back garden a lot lately because my two little furry friends, thankfully they've learned to climb down so they're not getting stuck anymore. They don't panic in the tree. They can climb up and they can climb down. I have been waiting for nesting season to be over so that I could A, let the cats explore and there would be no threat to the birdies and B, I could trim some of the branches. Now I'm using this Ryobi electric lopper till and it is handy on slimmer branches but it's absolutely useless on anything that's a bit thick. So if it's like three or four inches thick, it's not really gonna cut through it. I wanted to, how would you say, lift the canopy of this tree so that I wouldn't get poked in the eye when I did have to climb up the tree to get a cat. <laughs> and I just wanted to trim branches that are going into my neighbor's garden as well. The cats walk along the fence and I, yeah, I just wanted to tidy up their walkway. What I love about this tree is it's evergreen and it gives me so much nature. There's always birds in it. Now the cats, they do have bells on their collar and they're not really interested yet, but I only let them out when like I'm in the garden. They don't go out on their own. So I do have to balance their needs with nature's needs as well so that the birdies don't get eaten. When trimming trees, it's always good practice to cut any crossing branches. So if you see branches that are crossing and rubbing off each other, it's a good idea to remove them, let some more air flow into the tree because if the branches rub off each other, they can cause little, I don't know, cuts 
and that's how disease can get into the tree so I think this tree started off as a shrub to be honest it was here when I moved in 11 years ago but it was definitely it was not as big as this it was like a shrub so in the past 11 years it has turned into this chunky branched tree but I love it but it does I think I need to get a professional to come in and maybe get some of the bigger branches that are crossing and just shape the top of it but it does give off berries and it flowers around about May time. It's not a hot on tree. It's like a dupe, <laughs> a dupe <laughs> of that tree. And yeah, it gets lovely berries and it gives shelter. There's these pigeons that are always sitting on a particular branch that I had to make sure that I didn't cut. So yeah, it gives shelter and brings some life to the place. Because I don't have a huge compost area, I do have the hop in which was full. I decided to cut up as much as I could of the foliage. I popped the foliage into my brown bin and with the sticks and branches that were left, I'm going to cut these up into small enough pieces. And where I have the little bug hotels underneath the tree in the shady spot, I kind of have like a little, I have a section where I dump like empty compost from pots and yeah anything yeah old soil i just dump it in there so it kind of is a mini compost corner but i'm gonna put the branches in the corner as little bug hotels not a hotel but i'm just gonna throw the branches in an odd manner into the corner because coming into autumn winter more leaves will fall and i can blow them into that corner and the rotten wood i think rotting wood some bugs like it and I already have some bug hotels down there. So yeah, I'm just going to give it back to nature. I suppose I could dry it out and burn the wood. But I'll just give it to... I can go to the shop to buy the to buy firewood. But the bugs, I don't think they can go to the shop to get a nice habitat. So I'm just going to throw them down the end. Hello. I'm sure you're thinking, oh, you already know what's in this box. I'm a little bit late. But that's just how this year has been. I have spring bulbs. And this year I've had a bit of a shitty year um, with everything that's happened. But you didn't think I'd forget to order some spring bulbs. Oh no, no, no. Even in bad times, I will still remember to order my spring bulbs. This is what I got. These are for the front. Also, I feel like my camera ain't zoom focusing on me. I don't know. If I'm out of focus, I'm sorry. Camera's on the blink. So I did a little Mr. Middleton bulb order. And these bulbs are for the front, so the raised beds that are in the front are new. There's no bulbs in them because I planted, they were made in April. I planted them around about May time and I put perennials and shrubs in them. So there is no spring bulbs. So I need to add a little bit of color into them and a bit of interest for spring. I also have no bulbs in the barrels. To be honest, there's not a lot in the front. I also have, which you would have seen, a little wild meadow area that I made and I think I am going to put a couple of spring bulbs in them. The thing with spring bulbs is the foliage is the dieback of the foliage. That's something I've noticed when you have bulbs in the border you're waiting for the foliage to die back and I can look a bit bleh, you know that foliage has to go yellow and you know but this is what I got, and you know what, I have been relatively, I have been good. Oh, okay, I'm gonna start with the Cyclamen head, Hedrofolium. Hedrofolium. Monty Dan was actually talking about Cyclamen in a recent Gardener's World video or episode, and he was saying, he was explaining the difference between Cyclamen Hedrofolium and Cyclamen Coom, and if you have the two of them together, Hedrofolium will kill the Coom, it will outperform it basically. So I got some hedrofolium and I thought that these were gonna come as little pants, but these are tubers and look at the tuber. They look like potatoes. Um, it looks kind of like a, yeah, a potato. So yeah, I was watching Garden as well and I was like, oh my God, I'm after ordering some of them. So I'm gonna put these into the shady corner that you saw me plant up a couple of videos back. I put in um, what they called hellebores and I left a few areas around it where I could put in some of the cyclamen that would give me a bit of color. I love cyclamen because 
you actually have a bit of foliage and ground cover on them all year round. So their little leaves do stay, it's just the flower. So I'm hoping maybe they might flower. I'd say if they were already in the ground, they would have flowered. But maybe they might flower around about November time. I don't know. But at least I got them. Did I get two bags of them? I did get two bags of them and it says there's five tubers in each but there's definitely more than five in that one so whoever was counting the bulbs that day it's like when you get an extra chicken nugget in your happy meal <laughs> that, I, that gives me joy um, okay now I feel like I've been scammed <laughs> I bought a load of daffodil altruist Narcissus altruist right this is the picture on the front yellow with the orange center but i bought them because of the picture on the back can you see oh it's looking different on camera i the picture on the back looks different to the picture in the front and i bought them for the picture in the back because they look a bit more rusty orange a bit more rusty and the reason why I bought these when I saw that lovely rust colour, but I think it's a filter on the picture, is because when I was at the Chelsea Flower Show, and I noticed it last year as well, so two years in a row, I have noticed a verbascum plant that has that lovely rusty colour. I do have a verbascum in the front garden, I have three of them, but they're yellow. If you can find a verbascum, I don't know the verbascum blah 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 name, but it has a lovely rusty orangey kind of colour. I think if you go back on the Gardener's World episodes of Chelsea Flower Show, Monty Don did talk about it and I think he says that it changes colour if it doesn't get sunlight or something, or if it does get sunlight, it changes colour. So I thought, ooh, this is like the daffodil version and I'll have a bit of colour. So I have to, I bought five bags of them. So I'm thinking, these might look really cool with the Camassia that I bought in the, whatchamacallit? Do -do 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 -do. Brain is having a little fart. The meadow, the, the no dig mini meadow. Because I'm hoping with a bit of rain and stuff that that ground will be soft. And I do have a bulb planter that you, it's like a shovel but it's a bulb thing on the end. Um, so I'm thinking of maybe putting these in the grass they will look nice in the barrel as well. But what I got to go with them, so think lovely burnt orangey yellow, that I then got, where's my Camassia? Camassia, oh, I'm not even gonna try and pronounce this. Leechlingly. Oh, L-I-E-C-H-T-L-I-N-I-I. -I, -I. I got Camassias. Camassias, I was chatting to um, one of the horticulturists up at the Walls Garden, that's not too far from me, when I got the free tree fern, you would have saw that video. Um, and he was kind of saying that, they're not that they're old fashioned, he didn't say that. He just says that because of all the, the foliage that you get with them, like they're up on the roundabout, but I think he was saying that they've kind of, like the purple allium, they're not as in fashion maybe. But I love Camassias purely because they brighten up May. So they flower, for me, Camassias, I have a couple in the back. These are for the front to give me a bit of colour for May. I'm thinking, I, do, I did get some Alliums, but not the big Globemaster ones. I'm thinking the Camassia and the other Alliums I got will give me a lovely bit of colour in May time. So when the spring bulbs have gone to foliage and they're looking a bit pew, Camassia is going to be like, Hey, give me a bit of colour. As usual, I bought too many of them as well. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, I did get some alliums, but I got the more kind of dainty ones. That's fine. Oh, I got a fritillaria. Fritillaria. area. Fritillaria. A fritillary thing. Fritillaria. Fritillaria. Uh, ivory bells, one piece. God, see, this is what happens when I look at the, oh, the magazine. Um, Allium Starlight. So these are more 
little mini fireworky alliums. They're not like the big huge ones that you've been seeing the past couple of years. They're more kind of dainty and I love them for a bit of height. And alliums dry beautifully. Um, and when they die off in the border, yeah, you're just left with a lovely, like, structural seed head. Look at me, sounding fancy, a structural seed head. Uh, oh, Daffodil Kedron. That's a new one. That was new in, and I said I want that because it's new. Daffodil Kedron. And I've got a couple of them, what else? That's in the rough mess here. Not really messy. <laughs> Why can't I just buy one and two? Oh, hang on. Did I not buy tulips? I, I was supposed to buy tulips. Hang on. Where's my invoice? Oh no. Daffodil, cyclamen, narcissi, fritalaria, aria, aria. Allium. I did not buy the tulips that I was supposed to buy. Which means I'll have to just place another order. No, not allowed to order anything until I plant these. So this is what happens to me. I have been on the Mr. Middleton mailing list for years and every time I get a new magazine, actually there was one day, I, so obviously I get a B magazine once a month because I'm in the association. So you get a B magazine, that's the size of this. And on the same day, I got the bee mag and I got the bulb mag. And I made a cup of tea and I sat there and I was just in my element. But let me try to find the... Where was I going with the fritilli? Fritilli Didn't order any snowdrops. I was supposed to order snowdrops. Oh, that's Allium Starlight. Oh, I'll try and get the pictures off the website. See the way Allium Starlight is a bit more whimsical? And what I like about alliums is most of them you don't have to stake, they kind of stay up on their own. Oh, that's Daffodil Kedron. Then where was I going with Altruist? So that's the picture of Daffodil Kedron there. I was meant to order more of them. Ah. Oh. See. <sighs> I get to... Oh yeah, Daffodil Altruist. See, there's the, they're very similar. See what I mean? That was the picture and it looked more burnt to orange. I ordered that one. Ah, I get too excited and I'm like, ooh, boobs. And there was a lovely, I wanted to get double-headed tulips for the front to dot in the border, in the raised bed. But did I buy it? No, I didn't. So I wanted, that's what I wanted to get. I wanted to get that tulip there, double late Angelique, because I thought that with against the blue of the Camassia, the pink and the blue, I thought they would pop. And then there might be a couple of daffodils starting to go over. So you'd have them bouncing off in the grass. But you know what? 12 euro for 20 is all right. Anyway, I didn't order them, did I? So, I'll have to place another order. But I'm not placing another order until I plant what I have. So I think I'm gonna plant definitely the hydrofolium, the cyclamen, get them in as soon as I can, because there's a good chance of them starting to grow soon once they're in the soil. And, yeah, that's what I bought. I would love to know what bulbs did you get? When I see like new <laughs> next to the bulb, I'm like, ooh, but that's a new one, what's that? I know some people aren't mad on kind of bulbs for that reason with like the foliage, you're waiting for them to kind of die back. And, but I just think, especially in Ireland and the, in the UK, we've such a long growing season when you think about it. From chatting to a couple of you guys who are overseas, you don't have as long of a thing like because you're waiting for snow to melt it up until May, some of you guys. Whereas like, if you're in Ireland and the UK, God, you have flowers, kind of like February, you start to see the snowdrops, the crocus, um, the, all the little bulbs in the grass. And then March, full of daffodils, tulips. Um, yeah, we've such 
we have such a long, we have a lovely spring, is what I'm trying to say. So yeah, I need to, and I absolutely, I've said it so many times on the channel, I, I'm not a fan of the dark nights of winter. So when I see around about mid-January, February, when I see foliage starting to pop through, that just gives me some serotonin because I'm like, okay, spring is on the way. We've gotten past the point of, you know, the darker nights. The days will get longer by a few minutes every day. And yeah, my winter blues start to slowly dissipate. So yeah, let me know in the comment section. Did you buy any bulbs? Do you already have some bulbs? What's your favorite bulb for spring? And yeah, we can have the chats now. I need to go back out to the garden and start finishing more of my tidy up jobs. Okay, so here is how the tree is looking. It probably doesn't look like I actually did much, but it is looking a bit more, I don't know, not as cluttered around the base of the tree. Now, I have another messy corner and I'm sh I know what you're thinking, because in the past couple of garden videos, I have been tidying up, whether it's a messy laneway or I don't know, I've been trying to cut down on the amount of pots and random stuff, but I have a messy corner that has just been a bit of an eyesore. It's right next to the door as I come out of the kitchen and it just has self-seeded weeds in it. There's one or two gladiola bulbs that can be rescued, but everything else is just, there's like a self-seeded tree in it. And whenever I feel overwhelmed with how the garden is looking, I try to just do one job at a time because I think when you see all of the things that need to be tidied and organized, it's like, just do one little thing and get that nice satisfaction, that feeling of grat gratification or just feeling satisfied. So yeah, I will share, I am happy to share my messy corners with you because that's the reality of the garden, is it? And I am just the queen of dumping something in a corner and forgetting about it. I was looking for Ruggie and I've just found her in the compost bin next to my washing. <laughs> what are you doing in there? That has to be the most uncomfortable place ever to sit. So what is the rule? We are not allowed to buy any more spring bulbs until I plant what I have. So I am gonna plant out this cyclamen hedrofolium and I'm just gonna dot them in the gaps that's in 
this border in this shady spot. So since the trees have been cut, obviously the light is changing, coming into, you know, mid-October, the clocks are going to change at the end of the month as well. So the lighting, there is a bit more since the trees were trimmed back last month in September. So these cyclamen, they're going to be semi-shade, so I'm hoping they do well. And also they're going to hopefully self-seed and dot around and I can dig some of the self seeders up and move them further along. So I just want to have some ground cover because the more ground cover, the less weeds. So that is some of the things that I cut up to this week in the garden. Don't forget to check out the cottage garden playlist if you would like to watch some of the other videos. Go back and see how far the garden has come along. Also, if you want to watch videos ad-free, you can become a member and check out the playlist. There's over like 150, 160 videos that you can catch up on and they're all ad-free. If you are new, welcome. Do say hello in the comment section. And for my regular viewers, you know the drill, a cheeky thumbs up. I will see you in the next one.